Hi, I'm Jennifer Pulley, and welcome to NASA Connect, the show that connects you to math, science, technology, and NASA. Today, we are at NASA Kennedy Space Center on the east coast of Florida, and behind me is the Vehicle Assembly Building, or VAB. This is where NASA assembles all the components of the space shuttle system. Kennedy Space Center is also a site where NASA launches satellites that study the Earth and our solar system. In fact, the satellite Voyager 1, which was launched right here back in 1977, is very close to leaving our solar system. It's over 13 billion kilometers, or 8 billion miles, from Earth. Can you imagine that? 13 billion kilometers? Whew, it would be hard to count that high. Just look at all the digits that 13 billion represents. I don't know about you, but it's hard for me to imagine just how far away 13 billion kilometers is. I mean, how large is the solar system? It would probably make more sense to us if we could see a scale model of the solar system. This would give a better understanding of how far away Voyager 1 or the other planets in the solar system are from Earth. The focus of today's program is to learn why we use scale models to determine the size and distance of objects in our solar system and beyond. In order to learn how to scale the solar system, we must first understand the concept of scaling. During the course of the program, you will be asked to answer several inquiry-based questions. After the questions appear on the screen, your teacher will pause the program to allow you time to answer and discuss the questions. This is your time to explore and become critical thinkers. Students working in groups take a few minutes to answer the following questions. What does it mean to scale? Why is it sometimes necessary to use scale models or drawings? List some math terms associated with scale models or drawings. It's now time to pause the program and answer the questions. A scale model or drawing is used to represent an object that is too large or too small to be drawn or built at actual size. The scale gives the ratio of the measurements in the model or drawing to the measurements of the actual object. Remember guys, a ratio is a fraction that is used to compare the size of two numbers to each other. Let's take a look at an example. One of the most common types of scale drawings is a map. Maps are very useful when planning a trip, whether it is across town or across the country. Norbert and Zot are planning to drive from NASA Kennedy Space Center to Washington, D.C. Norbert wants to estimate the distance he and Zot will travel. The scale on Norbert's map reads 1 centimeter equals 100 kilometers. How can he estimate the distance in kilometers from Kennedy Space Center to Washington, D.C. using the given scale? The scale can be written as the fraction 1 centimeter over 100 kilometers. The first number, 1 centimeter, represents the map distance, and the second number, 100 kilometers, represents the actual distance. First, using a metric ruler and the given map, measure the linear distance from Kennedy Space Center to Washington, D.C. On Norbert's map, this distance is approximately 13 and a half centimeters. Now we have all the information we need to set up our proportion. Remember guys, a proportion is a pair of equal ratios. The first ratio is the map scale, and the second ratio is the distance from Kennedy Space Center to Washington, D.C. Let's set these two ratios equal to each other. N represents the distance that we are trying to calculate. This proportion can be read as one centimeter is to 100 kilometers, as 13 and a half centimeters is to N kilometers. In a proportion, the cross products of the two ratios are equal. In other words, the product of the top value from the first ratio and the bottom value from the second ratio is equal to the product of the top value of the second ratio and the bottom value from the first ratio. We can write the cross product as one centimeter times n kilometers 
equals 100 kilometers times 13 and a half centimeters. Using multiplication, Norbert calculated the actual distance between Kennedy Space Center and Washington, D.C. to be about 1,350 kilometers. Students, here is an important point for you to remember. Proportions often include different units of measurements. Units must be the same across the top and bottom or down the left and right sides. If the units only match diagonally, then the ratios do not form a proportion. So guys, are you still having trouble trying to understand scaling? Okay, well, let's look at another example, this time using a scale model. Right behind me is a replica of the space shuttle. And this right here, this is a scale model of the space shuttle. The actual space shuttle has a length of 37.2 meters a height of 17.3 meters, and a width or wingspan of 23.8 meters. Now this shuttle model is a 1 100th scale of the actual space shuttle. Now that is 1 meter equals 100 meters. So using that scale, let's set up a proportion to calculate the length of this space shuttle model. The first ratio is the model scale and the second ratio is the length of the model to the actual shuttle length. N represents the length of the shuttle model. We set these two ratios equal to each other. Now remember, in our proportion, the cross products of the two ratios are equal. We write the cross product as one meter times 37.2 meters equals 100 meters times n meters. Dividing 37.2 by 100 gives us the length of the shuttle model, which is 0.372 meters, or approximately 14 and a half inches. Well, that wasn't too bad, was it? Do you think you can handle the other two dimensions? So now it's your turn to calculate the height and the width or wingspan of the shuttle model using the given scale. Remember, the height of the actual shuttle is 17.3 meters. The width or wingspan is 23.8 meters. And the scale is one meter equals 100 meters. It's now time to pause the program to calculate the height and width of the shuttle model. So guys, how did you do? Let's check your answers with mine. Earlier, we calculated the length of the shuttle model to be 0.372 meters. I calculated the height of the model to be 0.173 meters, or approximately seven inches, and the width, or wingspan, to be 0.238 meters, or approximately nine and a half inches. Did you get the same answers? If you did, great job. And if you didn't, don't be discouraged. Just go back and check over your work carefully. Make sure you set up your proportions and multiplied correctly. You know, scientists and engineers learn a great deal from making mistakes.